Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from the Nathaniel School of Music. In this tutorial, we are going to look at, well, the music theory, if you will, of scary music and or horror music or anything spooky or anything eerie or in simple words, any kind of tension, the emotion tension or, or dissonance, you know, those are official music theory words or just a sense of shock or, you know, basically those, those feelings which are not stable, I guess you could call it that. So there are a lot of reasons you might find this useful. You might be composing a pop song where you want to maybe make a bridge section which just comes from out of the blue and is a bit surprising as most bridges are you could also use this maybe as a as a fun intro you could also use it for a movie theme score concept where you know i've kind of borrowed a lot of these concepts over the years listening to i guess two essential resources of music maybe three it would be classical music western classical music has a lot of deep dark and sometimes scary harmony so I, it's come from there and then a lot of the movie theme scores it, I, I'm a huge fan of Danny Elfman the composer who's scored for pretty much a any Johnny Depp movie which is of note you'll find it uh, I, I first enjoyed his work in Edward Scissorhands and then you know all the way to Wednesday the Wednesday TV series on Netflix and he just keeps going there's also Beetlejuice which is which is an incredible score also a lot of metal music heavy metal death metal uh, progressive metal all of these genres progressive rock in general will have harmony which is a bit more I would say artistic in nature where you can explore themes that are not just about two people you know one writing to each other you know or what in thing, things like that these are more sort of you know storytelling themes like something about a war or a mission or a someone lost in the desert you know uh, and in the wilderness so to speak so that's about the introduction before we get cracking it'll be nice if you can consider getting my handwritten notes where i've broken all of this you'll see it throughout the video for sure but you might want to get a copy it'll be a downloadable pdf waiting for you on our patreon i've also composed a lot of riffs which pertain to these sort of genres. We we'll leave you a few links in the description and a few other related videos. So you can listen to these riffs of mine and also learn them at the very end. On our Patreon page, you'll get the chord charts of all of the riffs that I compose. You'll also get the MIDI files as well. So you can learn from it or reuse it or make it your own perhaps. So do consider supporting us on Patreon. And last bit of sales, please consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. So first off in music, what are the dissonant intervals? These are the intervals which can be used used either on their own or alongside other non-dissonant intervals to form these kinds of scary horror sounds. The, the general dissonances we have are the minor second. You see on its own if you play it harmonically or if you play it melodically. It's pretty much a dissonance. In fact, that's used in an actual movie theme score. The minor second, and then you have the famous tritone, you know, the, the, the interval of the devil, as some of them say. So you have... It's not so scary. I think the minor second is a bit more scary. And the next one I'm going to show you. Yeah, so a very mysterious sound. And again, very chaotic. Because of physics, the waveforms are not in phase with each other. So that's going to cause that dis uh, that dissonance. It's dissonance with the sound vibration hitting your ear, which is what you perceive as, oh, it's a bit annoying and thus scary. You know, it puts you on edge. So this is the tritone. A tritone can be remembered by the perfect fifth minus one. So you might want to remember perfect fifth, circle of fifths, or mug up all your tritones. And tritones, a quick word, tritones are inversions of each other. They are the only intervals in life or interval in life which are inversions of each other. What I mean by that is if you take C, its tritone is F sharp. And if you take F sharp, its tritone is C. 
mm. no other interval in music does that it's only the tritone and the tritone is used by a lot of famous great composers like bach also bach loved the tritone and uh, it it's also used a lot in rock and metal it's it's almost an an the way to play power chords if you're a heavy metal player anyway so the other interval which i consider very fascinating is the major 7th so you take the major scale I played C major. I think some ghost is going to haunt me for forever because it's banned on our channel. But anyway, I'll live with it. You have C to B. So if you flip that interval around, a major seventh is actually a minor second. It's actually B C. So you hear that instability. Okay. So that's a major seventh. Now the the funny part or the beauty of all these three dissonances is you can hide that annoying scary part of it by just adding a few more intervals. So if you take C to B and add the E it's no longer a dissonance because now you'll have C to E which is a major third. e to b which is a perfect fifth they are consonances they sound stable and happy and what not so you have two pleasant intervals and one unpleasant intervals good destroys evil in this case so it starts sounding now what was once like a horror movie part a scene it now sounds like you're chilling in the in a beach somewhere so to speak Okay so that's something you need to know similarly even the the jaws interval or the minus uh, second if you combine it with it can be very beautiful it's important to know how you bring those into the framework of what you're composing you don't just say oh minor second is scary or minor second is tension it some people actually in music theory books when teachers go about their business they say hey minor second is wrong well it's because you don't know how to use it it's it's like a very spicy chutney or chili which you put in inside a meal and it's an acquired taste you you have to learn and digest it and enjoy it enjoy even jazz has a lot of these dissonances in fact the nines the nine flats the nine sharps the elevens elevens are they are all considered as tensions or dissonances they sound beautiful together you just have to know how to use them so one more dissonant interval which i think we should study is the minor 6 Now the minor sixth is also an augmented fifth in disguise. So you take the fifth, raise it; it becomes an augmented. Can that C to G sharp? You could also call that as A flat. You can use it. Like you can kind of use it in a dark way, in a in a very desolate, gloomy way. because of the minor third e flat but if you bring in the e it starts becoming maybe a scene from Alice in Wonderland or a movie like that where you're clueless so maybe wizard of oz you know that's the augmented chord by the way so you take that interval perfect 5 plus 1 or major 6 minus 1 on its own it's pretty stable i guess but when you bring in the major third gives you that alice in wonderland sound and now i think now it gives you that batman kind of sound very dark theme or if you combine the minor 6 with a perfect fifth you get a very x files kind of th- sound sneaked in a major third as well we do that a bit actually that was a mistake but you get the idea it 
it's fun to mix minor and major thirds so this is the basics of the chords that we are going to do because chords don't come unless you know your intervals chords in intervals are nothing but building blocks for both chords and melodies so now let's look at all the types of scary triads out there or dissonant or tense triads that you can use in spooky horror music and so on triads i said triads specifically because tri means three of something so these are going to be three note clusters or three note groupings the first and obvious scary triad to get out of the way is what i'm calling the chromatic cluster where you take any three chromatic notes remember three is triad so take any three yeah there we have it you want any kind of dissonance you can just use this as a sound effect you don't have to go to some stock footage website and get all sorts of scary sounds when you can do it on any instrument just take C C sharp and D or E F and F sharp maybe add a synth make this make some violins played you know and do some more like you can have different clusters you can do one there what i like to do is maybe in the left hand in the bass register don't do it it just sounds too wrong when you do too many of these notes which may also be what you're going for but it sounds usable above middle c on the piano so this is your c somewhere above that is where this cluster chromatic cluster as i call it will work in the left hand however play it as a very assertive bass line maybe maintain a fifth chord in the red chromatics of four chromatics okay and then you have a triad that will involve the root the perfect fifth and one of those tens intervals that i taught you earlier what are they again flat 2 sharp 4 and major 7th not really major 7th actually but you will do a a, a flat 2 sharp 4 works and then if you want to do a major 7th you want to combine that also with a tritone so you get a 1 4 sharp and major 7 we actually call this a quartal chord a sharp we'll call this as c sharp 4q that's the official name okay this would be a sharp 4 you could also do c g and a flat which is the other minor 6 dissonance you can also play all these triads as an arpeggio has a completely different vibe depends on how you want to use it you can build a riff with just those three stuff like that so it depends in the lower register use them in a melodic way or in an arpeggio or in a bass way like a bass guitar in the right hand you can kind of play them together or arpeggiate them things like that you can use the chords and the triad to to make it a bit more spooky in that way just make it very ambient so you could even take a major third and add one of those dissonant so i'm taking a major third and then you can do thing as long as it has a flat 2 tritone and major 7th i guess and then you have your traditional so called scary triads the diminished which is two minor thirds okay i'll talk about the diminished sevenths uh, shortly then we have the augmented chord 
which is two major thirds. You can argue that these are both unstable because they don't have the perfect fifth in them. So if you take a major chord, it's a major third and minor third. If you take a minor chord, it's a minor third and a major third. So there's a kind of an asymmetry between the intervals, while with diminished and augmented chords, there is a symmetry. So we call those as symmetric chords because it's minor third, minor third, augmented chord will be major third, major third. So if you look at it intervalically by weight, if intervals were a weight, we associate intervals with distance, which is weird. So might as well associate it as a weight, I guess. They are hanging in the balance kind of intervals. They're the same, major third there and there. So hanging in the balance, uncertain, spooky, unaware, things like that. So that's why the augmented chord gets its sound. But I'm sure the because of the laws of physics, this can also be proven. Because the laws of physics are what makes all of this tickle the ears in however they do. Then moving on, we have one, two, four sharp. I kind of use this as well. I'm just calling it one, two, four sharp because I don't really know the name. Then you can do one, three, four sharp. I think I already talked about that. You also can use it in a very busy, chaotic context. Like the Simpsons. I, I actually call this a Simpsons chord. Okay, then you can also look at the one, four sharp and major seventh, which I touched on earlier. It's a nice, uncertain feeling, which you can kind of fly on the piano and arpeggiate. And the last scary try that I'll talk about is, take any old minor chord, let's say uh, A minor, and don't play A in the bass. A is already kind of scare, sad but gloomy but if you take some other note of the chord now let's propel C in the bass now start sounding a bit tense right if you take E could kind of because it's building up to something something else it's just unstable. So a minor chord as a slash chord where you take another note of the chord in its bass. Um, in fact, A minor with E will go to E and then E comes back to A minor. Moving on to what I'm calling as the minor movement chapter of this uh, particular lesson. First of all, you just change roots. You can start with a minor chord, let's say C minor, and just change your bass notes however you wish. Just go... You can play around with the energy. This feels a bit stable. Rather dissonant. Very dissonant. Ah, very stable. So you can have a nice contrast. And all you're doing is one minor chord. There we go. So it all starts with minor. Another thing you could do is take a minor chord. And what I call as vicinity thirds. So you take the triad and if you're on the C minor scale, you could float around in thirds. And also move your bass. bring in some of the tensions Danny Elfman does that a lot so instead of doing more, more sort of 80s glam rock embellishment you do this tritone 
and remember what i said earlier the more of the flat 2 flat 5 and major 7th you get into the party things are going to sound interesting that's one option that's with a flat 2 so that's a, th- a third float dnf sharp this is even without changing my left it's just the right hand then can even do things like that because it has a triton some chromatic thirds there things like that you can even do a chromatic jump from a minor chord when you jump both of them up they become the augmented chord which we already looked at Just on C, having some fun with just the root, root C, and playing around. I quite like that as well. A flat with B, two tensions. You might even identify these chords from specific movies, and let me know in the comments. everyone has left the room right now they they're just too scared of these chords there's no one here to call the videographer back please come back right so now we have vicinity thirds we also have minor triad extension so again all of this is on the topic or the chapter minor this is the last part you take a good old minor chord and extend it by adding a note so we have done three notes now we are moving on to four what's the first added extension minor sixth family minor chord with a major 6th and then the x files chord where you do a minor chord with a flat 6 you would call this as c minor add flat 6 i love this chord this is probably my favorite chord we leave you a playlist where i have done my favorite chords of all time where i've showed you how i've used that chord to compose certain uh, songs of mine so check that out later uh, then we have i guess the james bond chord which is the minor major 7th i think the james bond will add that additional 9 as well so minor major 9th but just that one a lot of scene changes in our bond film might have this this sort of movement this chord you can use this a lot for scene changes okay and uh, then a few more extensions but not from the minor family we we'll look at the diminished extension so uh, we if you take c diminished you can extend it with a diminished 7th and all diminished seventh chords are inversions of each other so what i mean by that is you can do c diminished seventh which will be e flat diminished seventh you can then do f sharp diminished seventh and then you can do a diminished seventh you have all these options to fool around with and nice for runs but a bit cheesy maybe a bit uh, or evil dead back in the day which which we used to actually laugh while watching it is a bit funny maybe poor animation maybe things have improved let me know some horror movie suggestions it's been a while actually it'll be nice to know diminished major 7th i really like this chord you could look at this as a b major over c cuz it gives you all those tensions and a minor third to go so minor third tritone major seven wow this has got to be probably the scariest chord of them all right there we go lot of dissonances in there and then to some level the minor seven flat five more lonely or of a chord it's like you're lost it's a bit spooky it's a nice halloween chord has its own mystery 
Okay, so that's about minor movement and di minor extensions, diminished extensions. Now I'm coming to the the more interesting part of the lesson where how you can now use all these chords together. I'm not going to overdo it with huge chord progressions, but I'm going to leave you with just a few ideas because I think we should do more of this because I also love this kind of music. So let me know if you're interested in the comments. Um, before we get into some clusters of chords or groupings, let's look at some slash chord options to bring out the tensions. So if you just take a pivot note, let's take G. Here's what you do. You go up to flat from G. What, In other words, a minor second from G. And play either the minor or the major of that. So a minor second from G would be A flat or G sharp. So you can literally play G sharp minor. Well, without G, it's just a normal chord. But G sharp minor over that G. You can also do G-sharp major over the same G. More a bit of... It's more of an anxious chord. It's a bit... Unstable, but... It's a bit more... A bit more scary. Okay, then you can also move up a major second. It's not so scary, but it's definitely very interesting. You can have A major with a G bass A minor over a G I, I think it's just more funky than scary so you can avoid that and then you just keep checking you know you can go up a minor third you, this is a minor 7 flat 5 go up a minor third play a minor chord with any root so if you take C my upper minor third E flat E flat minor minor 7 flat 5 it is then you take your good old G Go up a four. I like this chord. Remember, this is actually a minor slash chord. It's C minor with a G bass. And then, of course, our favorite friend, Tritone. For this lesson, that has to be the star of this movie. You will have G, find its Tritone, C sharp or D flat. Play a minor, it sounds quite useful. You play a major also, it sounds quite useful. Okay, let's go journey forward to minor sixth now. Uh, going a perfect fifth. Too, too pleasant. I don't like it. Anyway, this is a horror movie lesson. So if you go to E flat, which is the minor sixth. Yeah, beautiful sound. I love that. And then if you go. That's also nice. Uh, going up a major sixth may not work. Well, you could like it. It's an acquired taste. Now, a flat 7. So, you could explore even a major 7. Oh, I love that. So, the concept here is take any note, pivot it, and find triads which are not G major, not G minor, as G is the root, and see which of them work for you. This is called a slash chord. You're getting four notes. You're getting the three from the triad and the extra one in the bass. Okay? And now, let's look at triad movements. I'm going to look at them into maybe... Three small sub-chapters, geometrical triad movements, first of all. What I mean by geometrical triad movements is you go circle of fifths or you make geometrical shapes in the circle of fifths. So if you have the circle drawn out neatly and what's a simple geometrical shape? What are the two basic shapes out there? Triangle, square. Or square, the other way is called what? A diamond, I guess. So, yeah, diamond. So, you take a square, form squares in the circle, or you form equilateral triangles. The triangle has to be equilateral. That's very important. Not isosceles or the other ones. So, equilateral triangles basically from, let's say, C will give you an augmented chord set. So, that will be C going to E going to A flat C E A flat and then if you do uh, squares or diamonds from C it will be C to E flat I'm going the other direction C E flat F sharp 
A और C A F sharp and ये E flat और D sharp. So you'll get a diminished family. So the diminished family comes when you form uh, squares in the circle of fifths, and the augmented family comes when you form equilateral triangles. And you might think, oh, this is a bit new, and how am I going to mug up all this stuff? Well, how many unique squares are you ever going to have in a circle which has twelve uh, objects, like a clock? You're just going to need to deal with three fours are twelve, so that's just three squares. That's just three squares. So mug up the three squares, write them down, and how many um, uh, equilateral triangles? Four. Four threes are twelve. So it's not too big a deal, and why I'm explaining this geometrical motion is if you if you take C minor, and if you want to move in the diminished family, diminished family basically means square or diamond. You get some very spooky stuff. So that's a. Very non-diatonic progression. You're never going to have that in a pop. You won't even have that in a rock song. And I'm adding a chromatic passing for flavor. And if we do that in the triangle uh, augmented family shape. I'm not even thinking of composing. It just sounds nice. It sounds. I, I think it works for the music we are trying to compose uh, right now. You can use this, I guess, for a scene. Okay, so that's your geometrical triad movements. And if all fails, you can even do chromatic triad movements. You can do things like. Lonely. While the geometrical mo movements, this is more something actually happening in the scene. Some busyness, especially if you play it. Just a uh, final word. It's not just minor chords which are promoting this. You can even do this with major. Doesn't sound spooky, but it definitely doesn't sound like you're playing music based on a scene that is occurring, you know, in a normal mundane situation on planet Earth. It sounds very different, I guess. Like you're visit visiting the Egyptian pyramids for the first time or Taj Mahal or something. And last but not least, uh, to conclude this lesson, I'd like to talk about disconnected cadences, as I've given that word. So basically take all the cadences that you know and love in music, that you study in classical music, the plagal, the authentic, uh, the deceptive. I'll just take the plagal and maybe authentic for this lesson and you'll get the idea. So if you take a plagal from uh, in C, that'll be F to C. So Sounds pretty normal. Plagal is 4 to 1. Now let's make it disconnected. And maybe... Do Another plagal. like that. So you take a known cadence and just move it all over the place. Maybe even chromatically. I'd like that actually. It is 
evolving in a pretty interesting way, isn't it? Even I just discovered that. Pretty cool. Okay, so I hope you found this lesson useful to not only compose this genre music. I know we've branded it as a scary movie music tutorial, but you can just use it to make. anything non diatonic or compose something out of the ordinary like i said i'm influenced by those three uh, pillar genres metal in all its forms progressive music for sure in that rock metal space a lot of old classical music definitely artists like bach some beethoven for sure not so much mozart but you can suggest me some classical music i'll be happy to listen to it one tip i leave you with before i pack up the lesson would be whenever you're getting into a movie theater or whenever you're about to watch a tv show or a a, a movie on netflix or whatever try to listen to the album try to listen to the music only don't watch the movie maybe you can do this on the way to the theater this could be a good exercise and then watch the movie with that you know reinforced knowledge that subconscious music inside you you'll love the movie even more it's just a tip to enjoy movies more it's worked for me maybe you should try it so listen to the music first and then go into the theater or hit play on netflix because only music will trigger this sense organ to really feel stuff thanks a ton for watching the lesson hope to catch you in the next one as well and please support us on our patreon page where you'll get my handwritten notes and lots more thanks